Welcome to the World We Want, a television presentation of the New York Herald Tribune Forum for high schools. It teaches, features incorrigible teenagers from, <laughs> from practically everywhere in this program, particularly, especially unrehearsed. <laughs> this is our last day in the United States as a group. Within a very few hours, we'll all be en route to Berlin for a week there as guests of the Ministry of All German Affairs for visits in Berlin schools and discussions with Berlin young people. Each of these young people, as I believe you know, is the winner of a nationwide competition held under the auspices of the Ministries of Education in their own countries. They were brought to the United States the 1st of January by Pan American World Airways and Transworld Airlines and since that time have visited in four different host communities and host families. During the final week, the entire group has been given hospitality in John Jay High School, Katona Cross River. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'll try to see if I can make some sense out of this obviously enthusiastic group tonight. If I can come over here and sit down where I can look at them. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask you, you see, this final forum program is the time when I found, find out all the things I've been wanting to know and nobody's dared to tell me. <laughs> first of all, you know there's a forum rule, no single dates. How many people have been on dates in these three months? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, the exception that proves the rule. Now, what's the most fun, dates apart, what's oh, the most uh, fun you've had? Now, one at a time, raise your hands. What's the most fun you've had I in these three months? <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> Wait a minute, what do you say, Ruth? Ice skating. Ice skating. Oh, yeah. Did you stand up or fall down? Stand up. You did. How many of you learned to ice skate? Good. Oh. How many of you saw snow for the first time? Oh, no. Plenty the last week. Anybody else? Uh, yes, Yoma. Skiing. I've never had skiing before, and that was the funniest experience that I ever had. Snowball Funny part. Part. Experience. Funny because you can stand up and go faster? No, no, because, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> because I rolled down the hill. Snowball fights and cheerleaders. <laughs> we won't go into that. Uh, snowball fights are fairly costly. The one of you who got his glasses broken in a snowball fight the other day, whereas he... Let's over there now look, one at a time, we can't hear you. We've had this trouble for three months. Progressively, the first week you were here, you were all extremely polite and well-bred young people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> American, American. <laughs> yes, I know. We are, we are ice cream. <laughs> You're impossible. Now, let me ask you one or two very serious questions. Uh, what kind of gifts have you been buying these last couple of days in America to take home with you? Moans from Denmark. Oh, you should see a wonderful thing I found in Chinatown today. It's oh, just marvelous. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's the god of happiness. I, I, okay. You know, 15 bucks for that thing there. It's just oh, marvelous. No, that's, that's <laughs> very awful. I wish we could see oh, him more closely. Can we? in Japan. <laughs> 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 I think he's the... Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. He's made in Japan. Yeah. He's the god of happiness. <laughs> And you bought him in Chinatown? Yeah. Well, now, why are you taking the god of happiness made in Japan, bought in Chinatown, home from New York? <laughs> that's I, I believe that's because, because he brings happiness, and we need it. <laughs> you mean after you leave here, you will need some of the happiness you've had while you were here? Wow, wow. <laughs> well, now, what else, is, what other things have some of you bought? Wait a minute. Francoise, what have you bought? Oh, I went to Brentano's, and there were so many beautiful books. Oh! They're so lucky, you know. Well, let's see, what'd you buy? I wonder why they don't read them. <laughs> Hold it up, turn it around. What'd you buy? New poets of England and America. Yeah, what else? <laughs> Philosophies <Propaganda>. of India. <laughs> oh! The art of thinking. It's very wonderful. important. <laughs> they, but Francoise, that was written by a Frenchman. Oh, yes. Ernest Dimnet, isn't it? You do all the same, yeah, Mrs. Waller. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it makes me practice my English. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's cheaper in America. Death, Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. Yes. Death of a Salesman, yes. And Wisdom of China and India. Well, quite a collection to buy in New York. Glad you're going home with books from America. What's anybody, what have you bought, Ike, from Greece? Books? What have you bought in the way of books? Uh, well, I've bought some of the translations of uh, Indian manuscripts. And, and I've read the History of Philosophy by Bertrand Russell. 
which was... <laughs> and a queen. And uh, I bought a history of uh, Western civilization and principles to history of art by Verslin. And... Uh, <laughs> You're going to well, be reading on the airplane. Books. Some art books, too. Oh, they're very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, let's go over to Malaya. Swan, what have you bought? Well, I spent $60 and all on books. Did you really? Yeah. Oh. 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 It was peanuts. It was peanuts. As a more American slang. Anybody bought anything besides books? Yes, Krishnan. Krishnan. Records. Krishnan from India. Just a moment. I was thinking of something uh, typically American for my mother and I thought of instant mashed potatoes. Ahmed <laughs> <laughs> from Egypt, what I did you buy? I bought kitchen utensils for my mother. These little devices that make a hundred things at the same time. Oh, the gadget? Yes, the small gadget. What gadgets. particular ones did you buy? Well, uh, egg and white separator. Uh, something that costs chicken and opens bottles and opens cans and so on. <laughs> hundred things it was. What else has anybody bought to take oh, home? Some with them? Wait a minute, Yilma from Ethiopia. I bought records that anybody didn't. Many albums, about 30 records I have. Yeah. Rock and roll? Rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> John, what did you buy? Oh, Tom Lehrer records, um, Pete Seeger, the folk singer, modern jazz, a lot. Uh, what else? Yes, Foluke from Nigeria. I records and camera. A and, camera? Uh, yeah, it's a camera and a uh, shave for my father. A shave? Oh. Again. <laughs> a razor? <laughs> and an electric, electric shave. And a shave for her boyfriend. Oh! oh. <laughs> Did you buy? I bought the pants with the buckles on the shirt. Oh, what? Wait a minute, I can't hear. What? The pants with the buckles on the back. And the, the, Ivy, the, the, the Ivy League, Ivy League pants. Oh, the Ivy League pants. Well, that'll be interesting in Bangkok. <laughs> yes, Na, what did you buy? Wait a minute now. Na from Vietnam. Me and Rita, we went to buy many, many American full crinoline. Oh, crinolines? Yeah. Oh. I how have they five and Ritva have, has five too. Well, I can understand it in Finland, but how are they going to look in your long, very straight and narrow Vietnamese clothes? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, another question. What would you like to take home from America with you if you could? <laughs> <Mon? laughs> Salon, what would you like to take home? A plate of pizza. A plate of pizza. Yeah, I pay good. <laughs> so nice. What would nice you like? What? Uh -huh. An ice cream An factory. An ice cream factory. <laughs> Lebanon. A blonde with a thunderbird. <laughs> Swan from Malaya. Snow. What? Snow. 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 <laughs> it wouldn't last very long in Singapore. <laughs> Minu from Iran. What would you like to take home with you? A red Cadillac. A red cat. Oh, oh, Mike from Jordan. Helicopter. A helicopter. Oh, no. No. Me. You're all so materialistic. <laughs> I mean. Is there anything immaterial that yeah. you would yeah. like to take? A girl. Off? A girl. What? A girl, if you could. A girl, but not immaterial. No, that's not material. No, this is not Ben from Ghana, what would you like to take home? Well, perhaps I would like to take um, the degree of friendliness between the families. I mean, between the brother, um, the son and the daughter and the father and how they play together, that's what I would like to... Oh, I have an example. Oh. Oh. Yes. Trivo from Yugoslavia. I would like to, to take the library of New York City and the <laughs> Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art. What a nice I would like to... Now, wait a minute. One at a time. I have to know who's talking. We can't hear you. Sang me from Korea. What would you like to take home? Mrs. Swallow. <laughs> Got something they want the to Empire take. State. The Empire State. Wait, wait a minute. The Empire State, Mrs. Walla, and the United Nations. <laughs> that is very <laughs> peculiar in a flat <laughs> desert. It has to have Manhattan Nyla from a Pakistan. A department store. A department store. Oh, what have you been buying in the department stores, Nyla? Oh, flags. <laughs> flags. Ramirez <laughs> <laughs> Shore. Nyla, is it true that I saw you in an American dress yesterday? Shame on you. Yeah. Shame. And you who wouldn't wear American dresses at all? What made you finally break? I know you bought Bermuda, Bermuda shorts and slacks, but what finally persuaded you to buy an American dress? Oh, well, just for fun and fancy. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, yes, uh, Yilma from Ethiopia. I would like to take this, this world TV, you know, this, this studio, so that I can tell everything at home. <laughs> when you, you raise an interesting new question, what are you going to be doing as soon as you get home? What use are you going to make? Studying, now, don't all talk at once. Nobody can hear you. Yelma, what are you going I to do? I have to make reports for the newspaper. Yeah. And I have to make up all the subjects that I missed. And I have to take an exam. 
Then I'll catch up with Mike Latham. Be sure to send us the reports that appear in the newspapers in no matter what language, because our scrapbook has languages now from 72 different countries. Oh, Be sure to send them. Come over here to Greece. Yes, I can. I'll try to find you whatever new ideas I've got here. Well, now, have you all gotten some new ideas? Well, let me ask no. you another question before that. What preconceived idea about America that you had when you arrived has proved most incorrect? or inaccurate. Yes, Susie? Everybody dances rock and roll on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Ike? The people are very, very free and independent in the States. And you don't, don't think so now? No. <laughs> Not but as free and independent uh, as you thought. Yes, Let's go over here and then we'll go across. Patsy from the Philippines? Well, I always thought that most Americans can dance better rock and roll than we can in the Philippines. Uh. I haven't seen anybody who can dance better than my cousin. Well, here, they just go to school for fun. <laughs> but, uh, but I changed my opinion now. <laughs> you find out that they yeah, do study. Yeah, they what other opinions, Swan? I thought most of them were juvenile delinquents. <laughs> <laughs> most of them are. Well, most of them are not juvenile delinquents, as you can see. Yeah. Who else has had some ideas changed, no? I thought that when I arrived here, I see some cowboy, but the first cowboy I saw was Ahmed from Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> Someday, maybe we'll be able to take you out west and show you some real cowboys. Let's go to Lebanon and then to Turkey. How about you, well, Ibrahim? I thought that Americans manufacture cars just to make accidents. But no, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, on the subject of cars, uh, you know you aren't supposed to have learned to drive cars here because of the insurance. How many of you have learned to drive cars since you've been here? <laughs> All right, I'm finding out something. Uh, what? You must ask how many got cars under their own. No, no, that I'm not. Omar, what were you going to say? Well, I thought that uh, across the American soldiers in Morocco that the Americans are always uh, drunk. Oh. <laughs> that you have found is also not true. Glad no, that well, changed. <laughs> how about you, Onder from Turkey? I got the same impression about Americans by seeing those GIs in my country before I came mm. here. And well, I'm glad to see that all the Americans are not like the GIs I, I seen before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bashir from the Sudan. At first I saw that all the Americans do, the whole life in America is just mechanical. And everything is done by machines. It but is. now... No, it's not right. No, but now I see that the Americans... Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, Quiet. Yeah, Let Bashir Oh, they rush point. very much. Everything is done quickly by the people. And the husband, for example, he works in the office very hard and then he come and set the supper or things like that in the house. So uh, not everything is done by machine. Hard-working people hard and working. people who also work with their hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was it that you said the other day to me that uh, here even a street cleaner can be a high school graduate? Graduate. And that in the Sudan, a high school graduate is already an elevated class that must be respected yes. and that must be treated with special deference. That's an interesting point, I thought. Yeah. Yes, Garrett from Germany. Well, I'm glad that I found out that Elvis Presley is not typical for American youngsters. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, Faluke? I thought all the Americans are very rich. But when I came here, I saw that they work for their dollars. <laughs> well, we're very glad you found out that we aren't all rich and that all of us work very hard for our dollars. Yes, Bjorn from Iceland. I thought that in America they were most advanced in technology, but I found out that when you had a little snow, everything, the trains went <laughs> This yeah. never happens in Iceland. <laughs> we should explain, this, this is kind of a sore point with the forum because we were stuck in Union Station in Washington for two solid days. But I must say, you all cheered up everybody in the whole station by your good humor. I appreciate that. Um, we haven't had a winter quite this bad in the New York area, though, for a long time. Yes, Saraj? I think the people here uh, are very punctual, I mean, but they are not at all. <laughs> Yeah. Wait a minute. All the complaints I get about you from your host families yeah. is that uh, you kids are never punctual. Now, what's this you're saying? What's this you're saying? Why do you say Americans are not punctual? As I said, uh, the show, they said the show start at 8.30, it start at 9 or something like that. <laughs> well, we just do that to make everybody feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Yilma? I was positive to find the Indians, you know, but actually I didn't see one even. Yeah. Oh, you really, you really thought you were going I to find I was really Indians? positive to see Indians, you know, with their horses and with feathers on their head riding around the city. Wait just a minute, I want to stay over here and then we'll come back. Yes, Ahmed from Egypt. I thought uh, my host mothers and my host families would make me dishwash all the time and scrub the floors and babysit, but unfortunately I didn't do so much. By the way, have any of you uh, been babysitting since you've been here? 
I thought the children were not very well brought up and they would, were very noisy and it's not true at all. They behave very well. They're very quiet. You put them in front of TV and the you can do <laughs> Come back over here to Krishna. I'm from India, yes? I found out that Americans are more sentimental than I thought. They love to relax after a nice dinner, talk yeah. of the good old days when grandma baked delicious cakes and... <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, another question I want to find out about is, are there any, you've learned a lot about the United States. Obviously, you've changed lots of your preconceived notions. Do you have any questions in your mind about America that are still unanswered after these three months? Yes, Sangmi? I don't understand why these uh, teachers and professors here are not respected at all. <laughs> Oh. You still don't. Well, I disagree there. Oh, Krishnan disagrees. Typical forum. Go ahead. I think the students here have a more intelligent respect for the teachers than we in India have, and I should say uh, pe students in Korea are likely to have. Why do you know what they know? Maybe you don't. Well, I think our respect is mostly stuffy and formal. Here the students understand the teacher, and so do the teachers. Krishnan, why is it that the teachers are paid so badly if everybody respects them? <laughs> <laughs> you get more money being a I agree. Driver. I defend Krishnan's opinion. Well, now, wait a minute. Let John make... What was your last point? We didn't well, hear it, John. I mean, you appear to get more money being a truck driver or a man who works in Fords or somewhere than you would as a... Funeral yeah. director. Yeah, a funeral <laughs> director than, than you would as a teacher. I mean, society at large has no great respect well, for the teacher. Well, I said the students, John, not the society. Well, I mean, surely the students would reflect the society. Well, I'm not sure it's always the case. Well, they should be here. This is it mass education. Here, it's not so. <laughs> <laughs> One point on this before India and England get into an old <laughs> argument again. Uh, in how many of your countries, and I'm quite serious about this, in how many of your countries does the school teacher have a position of higher respect than in America? Thank you. Thank you. We show more respect, Mrs. Waller. Yes. The difference between sewing and having more respect. Yes. Well, I said yeah. have. What I'm trying to get at, I know in your classrooms they're much more formal and you bow and you say good morning and you stand up oh. and you recite and so on, lots of you. No, what I'm saying is, how are they regarded by the society? Does your society regard the school teacher? Yes. 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 Well, I wanted to make that point because many of us in America are very concerned by this. Yes? They are considered as messengers in our country. Messengers of God. As messengers of yeah. God? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you would say in Korea that the teacher is the most highly regarded in the society, wouldn't you? Yes. The intellectual? What is it, the intellectual first, and then the farmer, and then the businessman? Yes. We and kind of turn that upside down. <laughs> what? In the end, the soldiers. In the end, the soldiers in Korea. Yes. Well, uh, oh, we I wouldn't say that. Yes. No, I wouldn't say that. Well, let's come back to Minu from Iran. You say yeah. you treat your so teachers as if they're your parents. Yes, I mean, we have to respect them more than our real parents. Really? Yes. <laughs> now, come across to the other side, to Saraj from Thailand. I've been meaning to ask you something you wrote to me weeks ago, and I haven't had a chance yet. You said that when you are bad in school or don't know your lessons or make three mistakes in punctuation in a page of dictation, that your teacher beats you. Yes, uh -huh. yes, that's true. Is that true? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> if it's not so serious, he'll, beat the, he'll hit the hands. If it's serious, he'll hit the bottom. <laughs> interest how many of you in your school still have corporal punishment oh, no, no? Well, yes we have another kind of punishment we have to come back Sunday morning at school ah. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute Nyla from Pakistan I don't think anyone has this uh, punishment actually it's going away but if you do something wrong you have to get up and catch your ears and go up and down like that <laughs> now, now show us put your Pakistan sign out and show us suppose you've been bad what do you have to do well you have to go like this <laughs> Maybe this, wait, quiet. Maybe this program is very subversive. Maybe you're giving some teachers some ideas that your American home students won't like. But Nyla, <coughs> excuse me, what does that come from? Why do you do that? It's supposed to be saying Toba, which means I, ho uh, I won't do it again. Toba, Toba. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, 
how many times do you have to do it? Ten times, sometimes you have to do it uh, for 15 minutes in the sun. <laughs> oh. 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 And the sun in Pakistan, that gets difficult, doesn't it? What other kinds of punishment? Yes, Ruth? I think that I know English because my English teacher used always to uh, give me punishment to <laughs> copy if I disturbed the lesson. <laughs> yes, who else? What other? Yes, oh, Susie? Oh, my punishment marks here. It's a big zero. Oh! <laughs> How about Iraq? We have, we have to stand up for an hour and put, uh, put up our hands like this. <laughs> In grade school, of course, not high school. They can't do it high school students <laughs> because... But in a grade school, they have to put hands like this and put the leg up <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> and, and face the wall. the wall. And face the wall. Yes. How about Salah? Uh, the, the, the boy, the higher class, have to do a few push-ups when they <laughs> push -ups? do the homework. Yeah. <laughs> How many push-ups do you have to do for one mistake? Oh, I have done about 50 now. <laughs> How about Philip? Well, uh, in the Philippines, Teachers usually make you put in a pencil in your mouth or throw erasers oh, at oh. you. Not now very much, but there's a very interesting punishment that I discovered in my first school. When you get You're talking about America now. Yes, American school in Westfield, New Jersey. When you uh, when you get late or something, the teacher makes you subtract one fifth from five hundred until you get down to zero. <laughs> Trevo, what about the Yugoslav schools? What kind of punishment is there for people that don't know their lessons or they misbehave? If I, if I have no re respect for my teachers, my school fellow will, will lose the respect for me as a person. Yes. There's so many other questions I want to ask you. Yes, Bjorn? Uh, we have to sit on a whalebone for a little for a little while. <laughs> sit on a whalebone? On a whalebone. It's, uh, it's a shame to sit on a whalebone. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Francoise and then Sagmi. We're Francoise. more intellectual. We have the double of work when we don't behave. The double of work when we don't behave. That's why the French students are so smart. I can see. Sagmi, we don't have that kind of punishment in girls' school. But in the boys' school, they have. Oh, girls are always lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of punishment do you have? Well, uh, the teachers beat the students with rod. <laughs> they do? Oh. Yes. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, they do. Wait, uh, uh, yes, Yukiko, you have, we haven't oh, heard no. from you from Japan. We don't have such uh, punishment. And if teachers uh, uh, do such things, uh, parents come to uh, school and... Jarmaini from Indonesia, yes? Oh, we have a good... Um, Punishment. We are not permitted to go to school for 15 days. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, our time is almost oh. up. And there is so, yes, I'm sorry, it is. One more, Miss Wallace. Yes, one more. All right, Yuma, what? In, in my school, you know what we, the director will call us on Saturdays, you know, we don't have school on Saturdays. So on Saturdays, we'll be given a big basket to pick up scraps yes, of papers and rocks, you know, yes. all around the oh, soccer wonderful. field. You know, that's, that's a very constructive and useful punishment, punishment, I would say. Yeah. Now, we just got a couple more minutes. This is our last night here in the United States together. Uh, if you can be serious, and you probably can't, for just a second or two, I would like to know what you're thinking about now as you get ready to go off. What's been the point of it all for you as an individual? Bashir? Oh, I think that within every heart there is a desire and this is very seldom fulfilled. And within these unfrequent occasions, mine is fulfilled. Now the forum to me is a reformation of ideas and beliefs in my mind and heart. And this forum took place within myself and the other delegates and the American team ages too. The forum, after the forum now, we discover new personalities in ourselves, more compromising, more self-denying and less narrow-minded. And a little more noisy, if I can stop you <laughs> there. Let's go over to Krishnan from India. What's on your mind, Krishnan? Uh, I'm over. I think this is an attempt uh, at a new kind of international relationship. It's more human, more personal, and more individual. And I think this is what makes the forum so meaningful to each and every one of us. I think the first change that I sense is I can no longer regard people in terms of their nationalities. But I instinctively regard them in terms of their personalities. So, in this sense, I should say that our vague conceptions of international relations, universal brotherhood, and so on, have crystallized into realities and have struck us with all the force of 
a newly awakened consciousness. Good. Let me stop you right there. I want to go to Anna. I'm glad to end on that note. Anne from Norway, what's on your mind? It's so easy to criticize the United States. And I have often been just negative in my criticism. But I think that all of us have found out during those three months what it is that makes the United States unique and fascinating. That nowhere else do people hope enough to be idealistic enough to turn their ideologies into realities. Elsewhere, the intelligentsia anla analyzes the ideal idealistic plan, Analyzes, yeah. Analyzes, excuse me, and chokes it. I think that is one of the things. And uh, we like in Europe to say that you are materialistic. Mm. And I think that Americans respect the concrete more than the abstract. But yet here, the most idealistic plans find support. What is it that makes it? Well, you've all been getting a small chance to find out while yes. you're here. I'm glad you've dis discovered that double side of America. Now, I wonder if all of you would stand up. I'd love to end on the theme song that you've made your own, the Done Nobis Pacem. It's strange that Latin should be a common language for this group, but if you will, who can give us the signal to start and sing us just a little bit of the Done Nobis Pacem? Can you start? Who can give us the signal? All right, start. Oh, no.